The Life of All Might, My Hero Academia. Toshino Yagi, more commonly known by his hero name All Might, is the tritagonist of My Hero Academia and the arc protagonist of the Hideout Raid arc. All Might is the former number one pro hero who bore the title of the world symbol of peace. He also teaches foundational hero studies at UA High School. All Might was the eighth holder of the One for All quirk after receiving it from Nana Shimura. He has since passed the torch to Izuku Midoriya, whom he's training to be his successor. After using up all of the embers for One for All to defeat All for One, All Might retired and ended his era as the world's greatest hero. Welcome to the Amagi. In today's video, we're going over the life of All Might. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Amagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all of our social media accounts. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Background Toshinori was born quirkless during a time in the world where evil ran rampant due to the influence of All for One. Crime rates were on the rise because citizens had no hero to believe in. During his teenage years, Toshinori met Nana Shimura, who was like a motherly figure to him. He told Nana that he wanted to create a world where everyone can smile and live happily together. For that to happen, the world needed a symbol of peace to inspire a new age of harmony. Toshinori believed he could become the pillar that inspires people everywhere. Nana passed one for all down to Toshinori, making him the eighth torchbearer of the great power. Toshinori attended the UA High School, where Nana's friend, Gran Torino, served as his homeroom teacher and trained him. Toshinori's body was strong enough to utilize One for All at 100% from the start of training, so Gran Torino mainly focused on teaching Toshinori how to properly fight, although his training methods were so harsh that he accidentally instilled an innate fear within him. All Might Rising Inheriting One for All comes with dangers of facing All for One. Eventually, Toshinori, Nana, and Gran Torino faced All for One, but he proved to be too powerful. Nana sacrificed herself so that Toshinori could live on, entrusting his safety to Gran Torino. Toshinori could only watch as his master gave her life against All for One's supreme evil. As a promise to his close friend Nana, Gran Torino continued training Toshinori in her place. However, Toshinori was distraught after the death of his master and wasn't able to train to his potential. Thoughts of revenge plagued Toshinori's mind, and he wished to avenge Nana, who he saw as a true hero. Gran Torino reminded Toshinori that his enemy is a man who's walked the earth for over a hundred years. Toshinori cried while saying his master gave up everything to raise One for All's next torchbearer and admits that he thought of her as his own mother. Gran Torino recommended him to train in the United States after he graduated so All for One couldn't reach him and to gain experience as a hero. He reminded Toshinori why Nana sacrificed herself and restored his resolve. That spring, Toshinori graduated from UA and prepared to cross the ocean. Before he departed, Toshinori reminded himself of his master's trademark smile. He shaped his hair and donned what would become his own signature smile for the first time as All Might. All Might in America Soon after moving to Los Angeles, California, Toshinori rescued a group of scientists from an explosion. One of these upcoming student scientists was David Shield. David thanked Toshinori and noticed his destroyed attire. He developed a sturdy hero costume that would come to be known as All Might's Young Age costume. Toshinori and David would quickly become best friends and acted as a hero team throughout California. Toshinori shared his dreams with David. He told him that he desired to become a symbol of peace and shine a light on the world. Together, they took down a pair of LA villains, and David even relayed All Might's message to everyone watching, truly believing that one day All Might would become the world's top hero. During this time, he met Melissa Shield, David's daughter, who was born quirkless. Over time, All Might would serve as an uncle figure to Melissa. He encouraged her to become a support engineer in order to help other people, just like her father. Return to Japan Eventually, Toshinori returns to his home country, and his meteoric rise would only continue through the bronze, silver, and golden ages of his career. Eventually becoming the world's symbol of peace and number one hero, All Might reached the pinnacle dreams and inspired a new age of pro heroes where the country finally knew peace. Japan's crime rate dropped down to below 6% because of All Might's presence, issuing in an era of peace. However, the looming threat of All for One was still present. All Might took on a new partner, a fan with the ability to see the future named Sir Night Eye. Sir Night Eye would act as the brains of All Might's operations, while the number one hero was operating at the peak of his career. For many years, their partnership worked well. The Underground Masquerade All Might returned to the Might Tower after spending three days resolving consecutive incidents, setting a new record. 
After thanking the reporters and journalists gathered there for their encouragement and congratulations, All Might retired behind the Might Gate to rest. Before going to sleep, Toshinori asked Sir Night Eye for any last minute job, but his sidekick told him his priority should be resting after going 72 hours working non-stop. Just then, they received an emergency dispatch from Osaka after the Might signal was activated. Sir Night Eye wanted to check first if local heroes can take care of the situation. But All Might transformed into his muscular form and blasted off, knowing Osaka's call for him personally. The reason for that emergency was caused by All For One, who, in his desire to steal the quirk Overclock from the hero O'Clock, had transformed several people into a violent mob that was rampaging through the city. Once he arrived at Osaka, and in the blink of an eye, All Might defeated all of the villains. Then, after being informed of the situation, he goes to the place where the crowd emerged. But when he arrived, all traces of All For One had disappeared, being only O'Clock and a couple of his allies. The beginning of the end of All Might. Eventually, Destiny caught up with him, and once again, All Might was brought face to face with All For One. The symbol of peace became the first torchbearer to defeat All For One, completely crushing his head. This was at the cost of critical injuries, as All Might's stomach was lost and his respiratory system was damaged beyond repair. This created a limit on how long All Might could use one for all, reducing his ability to be the symbol of peace. Due to his injuries and condition, Sir Night Eye pleaded with All Might to retire, as he didn't want All Might to push himself to the brink of death, but he refused. Nezu agreed with Sir Night Eye and told All Might that he could look for a successor for All For One in the UA High School, an idea that Sir Night Eye considered as the best option. Toshinori agreed that the symbol of peace would need a successor, but refused to step down in case any new villain stepped up. All Might asked who the symbol of peace would be until he finds that successor. Even though All For One was gone, another villain like him will eventually appear. Sir Night Eye threatened to stop helping should All Might continue his reign as the number one hero. He even uses his foresight quirk to warn All Might of his impending death. He told him that in six to seven years, he'll confront a villain and head towards a gruesome death. All Might ignored Night Eye's warning, and they dissolved their partnership completely. In order to raise a proper successor, All Might enlisted himself as a teacher at UA High five years later. He spoke with Nezu about a potential replacement, and the principal believed that Mirio Togata, one of UA's students, would make a fitting successor to One For All. Vigilante's Beginning Arc during the period between when he defeated All For One until he became a professor at UA, Toshinori was involved in a series of events caused by a criminal organization known as the Villain Factory, whose goals were unknown. For several weeks, the Villain Factory was dedicated to distributing through Naruhata streets a drug known as Trigger, an illegal substance that boosts quirks but turns its consumers into violent instant villains, causing several incidents. One day, one of the factory's agents, Kuin Hachisuka, uses her Queen Bee quirk to inject the drug into innocent civilians, turning them into a horde of instant villains, causing chaos at the streets. Suddenly, All Might and several other heroes such as Airjet, Ingenium, Endeavor, Midnight, Eraserhead, and several others appear, and in a short space of time, they suppress all the instant villains. Due to the villain outbreak where several innocent people were turned into instant villains, Detective Eizo Tanuma organized a meeting in the police station with several of the heroes who helped stop the outbreak to discuss the situation and the best action to take. Because All Might couldn't attend, Eizo sent his partner Naomasa to the Might Tower to request All Might's help in dealing with the trigger outbreak, specifically telling him to talk to his secretary manager, Toshinori Yagi. On the top floor, the receptionist tells Naomasa that All Might will be returning shortly from Hokkaido. The Might Tower's roof opens up and All Might lands down. Many reporters ask All Might questions about global affairs, however All Might apologizes and decides to leave office affairs to his staff. All Might retreats behind the Might Gate, which is only accessible to All Might himself. Now Masa couldn't talk to All Might, but went to the receptionist to ask for Mr. Yagi. Coincidentally, Toshinori Yagi, All Might in his true form, is by the receptionist as well and hears Naomasa's request. Toshinori and Naomasa chat in Might Tower Cafe with Toshinori introducing himself as Might's production's second secretarial office and that he handles All Might's private affairs. Now Masa explains the instant villain rampages that have been happening recently, to which Toshinori suggests that heroes should be more cautious going forward. However, while they're having a conversation, Toshinori constantly makes excuses and runs to perform quick deeds as All Might. In the end, Toshinori accidentally returns with the uniform still visible, revealing his dual identity as All Might. Toshinori asks Naomasa to keep his identity a secret, to which Naomasa replies that he will, but he tells Toshinori that the police force is troubled by his spontaneous acts of heroism and calls him out on not filing reports on all of his heroic activities as customary of a professional hero. Toshinori is well aware that he must follow standard procedures when heroes wield their powers, but he wants to help people without being burdened by unnecessary procedures. 
While Naomasa understands him, he tells that every hero must follow the rules, and it would be a bad example if people know that the number one hero neglects his hero duties. Taking pity on All Might, Naomasa offers to file the reports for him, letting All Might act without any worries apart from telling him about his unplanned hero activities. Toshinori is delighted with Naomasa's offer and accepts it, exchanging his personal contact number with him. The next day, Naomasa receives several cases of All Might's unplanned heroics and wonders if it was Eizo's plan to push All Might's ordeals onto him from the start. Sky Egg Arc After this, Toshinori and Naomasa become friends, and for the next months, they have several meetings to keep themselves informed of their mutual jobs, with All Might carrying out his hero duties, and Naomasa continuing with police investigation to stop the traffic of Trigger and the Villain Factory. One day, after resolving a series of incidents in Okinawa, Toshinori Yagi returns to the Might Tower for a meeting with Naomasa in the building's cafeteria, only to find out the detective has his arm in a sling and several fractures. Naomasa explains to him that his injuries are the result of a confrontation he had against a villain, related to the villain factory. Although he tries to not give importance, Toshinori is worried and tells him that if he had known, he would have come to help him. The detective replies that his public figure, All Might, can't be taking jobs for personal reasons, and can't prioritize saving certain people because they could be taken hostage or used as a diversion by villains. Toshinori cannot deny that he's right. With the start of the new year, Detective Naomasa and Toshinori have another meeting, in which they say they hope to continue working together another year. Naomasa informs him that recently they've obtained new and important information about the case he's investigating. All Might offers to help him, but although he's grateful, Naomasa tells him that it's not possible. Police investigations lead Naomasa to discover the place where the villain factory carries out its illegal experiments. A police raid takes place, but number six, the same villain who left Naomasa badly wounded the previous time, is there. And he blows up the place before escaping with five creatures called bombers in order to attack the Tokyo Sky Egg and kill Captain Celebrity. Luckily, Naomasa survives and in a police helicopter, he goes to the Tokyo Sky Egg, where he sees several heroes fighting the bombers. The hero Eraserhead is with him and asks him to call All Might to come to the place to help because although it seems that the heroes are winning, the threat isn't over yet. Naomasa agrees to Aizawa's requests and calls All Might, who at the time is in a meeting at Might Tower as Toshinori Yagi. Upon hearing Naomasa's call, Toshinori apologizes and goes to a secluded area to talk to him. Naomasa tells him that Tokyo Sky Egg is in trouble, but before he can clarify the situation, Toshinori hears an explosion on the phone. Seeing how his creatures were being defeated, Number 6 had ordered the last one to self-destruct in a powerful explosion, which causes the Tokyo Sky Egg to begin to collapse, with thousands of people still inside. Upon hearing the explosion and Naomasa's request for help, the number one hero immediately leaves the Might Tower, taking him only a few seconds to reach the place, and in a flash, he smashes the remains of the tower out of the way, flattens the ground, brings animals to safety, and lands the Tokyo Sky Egg Dome safely, saving everyone. The bystanders are stunned by the inhuman feat and start cheering for All Might. The media reports the bomber's attack on the Tokyo Sky Egg, while hosting a large-scale event with some of the most famous heroes and how All Might saved everyone from the disaster when the tower began to fall. Journalists and reporters ask All Might about his opinion. He's simply thankful that there aren't any fatalities, and praises the efforts of the pro-heroes, law enforcement, and relief workers to care for the victims. After his statement, he says goodbye and runs away, being pursued by the media. After eluding them, All Might, now Toshinori Yagi, returns to the place and meets secretly with Naomasa. He tells him that he's going to stick around for a while in case there's another attack. Naomasa apologizes for getting bent out of shape, but Toshinori tells him that it's fine and that it was his impassioned plea that got him there in time. Toshinori explains to Naomasa that his quirk has a strong psychological component to his strength. When he hears a plea for help, he feels like it's a direct order to All Might. He tells him that it's because he accepted his power in order to save everyone and give them hope. Naomasa feels confused about how he accepted his power, and All Might realizes that he has unwittingly revealed an important fact regarding One for All. Before their conversation continues, they're interrupted by Shota Aizawa, Fatgum, and Monika, and Naomasa introduces them to Toshinori Yagi, who thinks that one of these days he'll have to explain to Naomasa everything about the secret behind All Might. In the distance at the top of the building, Number 6 watches the whole scene, still furious that All Might ruined his plans. However, he doesn't give up and uses a device again to reactivate the bomber's remains. The busted bomber's pieces and bits start to regenerate, combine, and grow into a gigantic and uniform mass of flesh that bursts, releasing a swarm of 200 mini bombers to attack everyone in his last attempt to cause a tragedy. Number 6 is confident that even All Might won't be able to destroy all the creatures, so he's sure that this attack will cause some deaths. 
everyone surprised at this sudden attack, but it generates the appropriate distraction for Toshinori Yagi to transform back into All Might, destroying the entire swarm with his Nebraska smash and saving thousands of lives again. Number 6 can't believe what he just saw. Entrance Exam Arc All Might spots the sludge villain fleeing after robbing a bank while he was shopping for groceries. He tracks the villain through the sewers and eventually finds him trying to seize the body of a young man, Izuku Midoriya. All Might uses his Texas Smash to blast the villain apart and saves Izuku. While the young man recovers, All Might encases the villain inside a couple of empty bottles in order to take him to the authorities. While Izuku awakens, he finds that All Might has signed his notebook and thanks him profusely. All Might prepares to leave, but the young fanboy holds onto All Might after he leaps high into the air. At first, All Might tries to shake him off, but stops after agreeing that Izuku would probably die if he was dropped midair. He's forced to land and tries to leave again, but Izuku questions him on whether he can become a hero without a quirk. Before answering, All Might's time in his muscle form comes to an end, and he reverts back to his true form, shocking Izuku. All Might reveals to the surprised young man that he was injured in a battle five years ago, and can only stay in his hero form for a short time. He goes on to tell Izuku that professionals must always put their lives at stake to save the day, and thus can't openly say whether it's possible to be a hero without a quirk, as it may not be possible. All Might says that if Izuku cares about saving people, he can always go on to become a policeman, as in that way he can be responsible for putting the villains in jail, even though it's often ridiculed. He tells Izuku that it's not bad to dream, but warns him not to obscure the facts, and then leaves. After leaving, All Might notices that he wasted time in talking with the young man, giving the villain he defeated a chance to escape, ridiculing himself for making such a rookie mistake. He makes his way to the scene of the crime where the villains captured yet another young man. He's unable to intervene after using up his hero form, but after seeing Izuku's bravery in trying to save Katsuki from the villain, while the heroes are unable to do anything, All Might's inspired enough to step in and use Detroit Smash to defeat the villain, saving both Izuku and Katsuki. All Might is, of course, swarmed by reporters after the battle. Later on that same day, All Might appears before Izuku, thanking him and giving him a proposal. All Might tells Izuku that he was touched by his bravery for trying to save someone, despite not having a quirk, and tells him that he too can become a hero. All Might reveals to Izuku that his quirk can be passed down, and that he's chosen Izuku to be the next one to inherit his quirk. Izuku's shocked and asks why he would give someone like him his quirk, to which All Might responds that he's been searching for a successor for a long time, and now has found someone to whom he doesn't mind giving his quirk, saying that despite not having a quirk, Izuku tried to save Katsuki while other people and heroes stood idly by. Izuku accepts All Might's proposal, and they begin training for the next 10 months, explaining to him that in order for him to inherit his quirk, Izuku's body must be strengthened to the point of being able to handle the One for All's power. After taking the decision to train Izuku to be the new One for All successor, Toshinori phones Night Eye to tell him this, but Night Eye is vehemently against the idea that a quirkless boy becoming the successor. Toshinori and Night Eye argue over the phone regarding Izuku. Toshinori argues that Izuku was intent on saving others while Night Eye argues that intentions were not good enough since there are more capable candidates with the same intentions as Izuku. However, Toshinori states that Izuku's quirkless, which made him a befitting candidate over the others. All Might trains Izuku at the Takuba Municipal Beach Park, a coastline that's been filled with trash. He has Izuku clean up all the trash as part of training his body to become strong enough to withstand the power of his quirk. Otherwise, it can result in Izuku losing limbs. After 10 months have passed, Izuku surprises All Might by cleaning the whole beach and becomes a genuine vessel. Amazed by his feat, All Might rewards Izuku for his hard work by having Izuku consume a piece of his hair, enough DNA to transfer one for all to Izuku. All Might takes part in viewing the UA entrance exam. He's pleased to see that Izuku used his quirk and his willingness to sacrifice himself to save Ochako Uraraka. After the exam finishes, All Might finalizes the paperwork to become a UA high school faculty member. He delivers Izuku's test results via holographic video. He first apologizes for not speaking to Izuku in the week after the exam. He continues, telling Izuku he did fine on the written exam, but got zero points during the practical. However, he goes on to explain that Izuku's brave actions during the exam were enough to score him 60 rescue points, giving him more than enough points to get accepted into UA. Quirk Apprehension Test Arc All Might seen secretly inspecting Izuku's participation in the pitch trial of the Quirk Apprehension Test, impressed with Izuku's focus of one for all at the tip of his finger and for his quick thinking of using the quirk in the shortest time possible at the last moment as a workaround for not being adjusted to the quirk. 
All Might approaches Shota Aizawa, calling him a liar, and says that he saw that he once expelled an entire new class of first graders last year. All Might knows that he kicks students out with zero chances, finding it weird that he didn't expel Izuku on the spot, and concludes to him that even he felt Izuku's raw potential. However, Shota replies that Izuku's are above the zero mark, and that's about it. He continues to say that he can kick out anyone whose chances drop below that mark at any time. All Might then says that they'll never get along. All Might later appears as the teacher of the Foundational Hero Studies class, saying that they'll have a battle trial for the period. He tells his students that UA's prepared their hero costumes and says to them to get changed into their costumes for the battle trial. Battle Trial Arc All Might compliments the costumes of his students before he notices similarities to his image in Izuku's costume and was internally annoyed by it. He soon explains to his students that they'll be separated into heroes and villains for the battle trial and it'll be a two-on-two -two team battle. He explains that in the battle trial, the villains will guard a nuclear weapon they intend on deploying and the heroes must stop them. He goes on to further say that the heroes can win by capturing the villains or reach the nuclear bomb before time runs out and the villains can win by capturing the heroes or keeping the core away from the heroes before time runs out. All Might then decides that the teammates and pairs will be chosen by lottery. After the lottery, All Might draws from the boxes and says that the pairs that will do battle are the heroes Izuku and Ochako versus the villains Katsuki and Tenya Ida. He explains that the villains will go in the building first and then after 5 minutes, the heroes will go in. He tells them to go all out as it's a practical exercise, although he says that he'll stop the battle trial if things get out of hand. All Might's seen in the surveillance room saying to himself that Izuku will not get any special treatment from him and will grade him as harshly as the rest. While watching Izuku and Katsuki battle, All Might's impressed by Izuku knocking down Katsuki and is real to have read Izuku's hero analysis for the future notebook in their first meeting and recognizes that the boy has memorized Katsuki's moves and used it to his advantage. All Might soon tells Katsuki to stop after seeing what his hero costume can do to amplify his quirk and becomes worried for Izuku after Katsuki initiates a huge explosion. All Might then tells Katsuki that if he uses another huge explosion, he'll end the battle trial and he'll lose, reprimanding him for trying to destroy the building that protects their stronghold, calling it foolish. Although he feels that he should stop the battle trial, he thinks that it would be better for Izuku and Katsuki to continue battling as it's necessary for the future that they envision themselves. After being asked to stop the battle trial, All Might's about to suspend it, but after hearing Izuku call out to Ochako, he stops. After Ochako touches the core, All Might announces that the hero team wins. All Might approaches Katsuki, telling him that it's time for his critique. He tells Katsuki that it doesn't matter whether he won or lost, but that he takes one look back, reflect on his experience, and move on with his life. In the monitor room, All Might says that Tenya was the best during the battle trial. After being asked why, he questions his students as to why he chose Tenya. After Momo Yayorozu gives her answer, he's shocked by her accurate deductions and nervously gives a thumbs up to her for being absolutely correct. During the next battle trial, All Might's impressed by Shoto Todoroki for not getting his comrades caught in the attack and at the same time weakened his opponent's positions as well as refrained from damaging the core. After everyone participates in the battle trial, he tells everyone that they did well and instructs them to change clothes and head back to class. Although he wanted to give Katsuki counseling for his self-confidence, he realizes that his transformation is running out of time and heads to the nurse's office. He's reprimanded by Chiyo Shuzenji for indulging his disciple Izuku too much and he says that he has nothing in his defense. They talk quietly, with him saying that his quirk is secretly known by a selected few, including her. Chio asks if it's important to be a natural born hero or the symbol of peace, to which he replies that without a symbol, the society of superhumans will fall to evil. She then tells All Might to be a better guide to Izuku. Later, Izuku tells Katsuki that he obtained his quirk from someone else, but the latter doesn't believe it. All Might then appears before Katsuki trying to counsel him on self-confidence, although he's told in response by Katsuki that he'll surpass him as well. Thus, All Might decides to leave Katsuki alone, finding that teaching can be difficult. The USJ Arc While heading to UA, All Might sees Kamui Woods and Mount Lady fighting the villain Habit Headgear, who had a family as hostages. All Might intervenes and uses Missouri Smash on Habit Headgear, defeating him and saving the family in the process. He then realizes that his quirk is steadily dropping off, as the amount of time he can keep his quirk activated has decreased. In a flashback, Izuku is seen speaking to All Might, telling him that he revealed to Katsuki about the secret of the One for All quirk. However, All Might's not angry about it since Katsuki interpreted it as nonsense and tells Izuku to keep the secret to himself and no one else, since if the villains knew about his secret, 
all of them would probably want to steal his quirk. He then tells 13 that he'll not be able to appear in the unforeseen simulation joint due to him using his quirk too much. After his nap, All Might tries to contact 13 and Shota, but to no avail. He decides to go to the USJ, but Nezu arrives to have a discussion with him, being held up by Mr. Principal's endless talking, seeing that he hasn't changed either. Unknowingly, the USJ is attacked by a group of criminals who call themselves the League of Villains. The students are dispersed and Eraserhead and 13 are badly hurt when facing the villains. All Might then appears at the USJ, telling everyone to have no fear as he's there. He says that he ran into Tenya and knows the gist about the situation. All Might quickly dispatches the villains in front of Shota, apologizes to him, and picks him up. He then rescues Izuku, Minoru Mineta, and Tsuyu Asui. All Might asks the three to head to the entrance and leave Shota with them. When Izuku tries to dissuade him into fighting, All Might tells him that it's alright. All Might prepares to face the main people in charge of the attack, Tomura Shigaraki, Kurogiri, and Nomu. All Might uses Carolina Smash on Nomu, but has little effect. He realizes that his blows are not having any effect against the villain. After hearing Tomura Shigaraki's information on Nomu, All Might uses a backdrop slam against Nomu, causing an explosion. However, Kurogiri opens a gate with his quirk, causing All Might's attack to fail, and allows Nomu to grab All Might. However, the combined effect of Katsuki and Shoto allow him to escape from Nomu. All Might then blocks a punch from the regenerated Nomu, giving Katsuki some time to evade. All Might then calls Tomura's view on the title Symbol of Peace as rubbish. He tells the children to escape, thanking Izuku for his concern, and says that he's fine. Realizing that he has only a little time left, All Might decides to go all out. He and Nomu get into a fist fight, and All Might sees that he can absorb each punch at 100%. All Might decides to surpass his 100% and launches a devastating punch against Nomu, sending Nomu flying out of the USJ, defeating him. In his younger ages, All Might claims that it would have taken five punches tops to defeat someone like Nomu, but now that he's not in his prime anymore, it took over 600 punches. Even though he's badly beaten and battered, All Might prepares to fight Tomura. All Might asks why he's not going to fight, since it's his mission to kill him. All Might then realizes that his strength with Nomu has completely left him powerless, not even having the strength to take another step. Tomura and Kurigiri attack All Might, but Izuku intervenes to protect the powerless All Might. However, one of the heroes that Tenya called as backup stops Kurogiri and Tomura from attacking him. All Might then goes back to his normal form as Eijiro Kirishima approaches him and Izuku. He gets worried that his secret will be exposed, but Ken Ishiyama arrives and blocks Eijiro's way before he discovers All Might's weak form. Cementos tells All Might that he was told about his state and that his secret is safe, to his relief and gratitude. When Izuku tells him he couldn't do anything, All Might says that it's not true telling him that if it were not for his few seconds of bravery, he would be dead, and thanks him for saving him. All Might is then seen at Yue's nursery, being treated by Chio. The detective Naomasa arrives, who All Might knows of course, and asks him about the students' conditions, as well as Shota and Thirteen. Naomasa tells him that the students are unharmed, but Shota and Thirteen are injured, but not in danger of death, relieving All Might's worries. All Might tells Naomasa that the students fought bravely and that they will become great heroes, to which the detective agrees. UA Sports Festival Arc All Might seen in the meeting room, commenting on Tomura's arrogance, and when he started to panic when things went wrong. After taking Tomura's childish personality into consideration, as well as his determination, All Might concludes to those in the meeting room that Tomura is a mere character who believes that he's the center of attention. After the meeting, All Might finds Izuku and asks him to have lunch with him. In the resting room, All Might asks him how he's handling his quirk, and Izuku replies that he's gained adjustment to the quirk, saying that he didn't break his arm when punching Nomu, which pleases All Might. He then tells Izuku that his time as the symbol of peace is heading to an end, much to Izuku's sadness. All Might says that UA Sports Festival is an event the whole country will be watching, and tells Izuku it's the event he wants the whole world to know that he's the new generation's All Might, and the future symbol of peace, shocking Izuku. All Might states that he wants Izuku to demonstrate his full potential to everyone at the sports festival. After Izuku doubts himself, All Might encourages him, stating that the difference between someone who aspires to the top, and someone who doesn't, will have a huge influence when he steps up and steps forward in society. All Might says that he understands Izuku's feelings towards his condition, and won't force him to do anything, but asks him to remember his feeling during the time he cleaned up the seaside park. At the sports festival, after Izuku places first in the obstacle race, All Might smiles and claps for him, like a proud father. All Might then ponders about Kotsky, thinking that his ranking in the obstacle race, combined with the sheer versatility of his quirk, makes him a popular choice for a teammate. 
Near the end of the human cavalry battle, after seeing Katsuki using strategy to get Nato Monoma's last headband, All Might comments to himself that Katsuki, despite no one telling him, is grasping instinctively the difference between those who don't necessarily aim for the top all the time and those who always do. After the lunch break begins, All Might's in his hero form greeting Enji Todoroki, saying that it's been a while and asks him to have tea with him. All Might says that they haven't spoken to each other in 10 years and that he wanted to give him a shout out. Enji replies that he can take his tea offer to some other place and tells him to go away. As Enji leaves, All Might stops him saying that his son Shoto was able to show a great performance even without using half of his power. All Might then asks Enji for advice on how to raise the next generation. Enji comments on All Might's attitude, finding it to be annoying, and then says that he will make Shoto a hero that surpasses All Might, then angrily walks away. All Might goes to see Izuku before the beginning of his match. After Izuku says that he can raise his strength only a little with One For All, All Might says that originally on a scale of 1 to 100, the amount of strength Izuku's body could tolerate was zero. But now, it's five. When Izuku starts frowning, All Might cheered him up, telling him to do his best and encourages him to smile when he's full of fear and anxiety. All Might then concludes that he's always watching Izuku. Always. Izuku manages to move on to the next round after defeating Shinso, but not without problems, since something strange happened with One For All. All Might goes to the infirmary to see Izuku. After Chiyo scolds All Might for putting pressure onto Izuku, Izuku tells All Might about the mysterious shadows he saw, saying that the shadows helped him break free of Hitoshi Shinso's mind control, and asks All Might if what he saw were the people who wove the power of One For All. All Might replies that he too saw something similar to what Izuku saw in his younger days. All Might theorizes that the people he saw were imprints of those who have used One For All, but not the sort who have a will on their own, and concludes that Izuku broke Hitoshi's spell, not because of the predecessors of One For All, but because his unwilling willpower caused the visions to appear that broke Hitoshi's brainwash. Izuku isn't completely satisfied with the explanation, but All Might tells Izuku not to dwell on it and tells him to go watch the next match. After Izuku leaves, Recovery Girl says that Izuku also saw him in the vision, to which All Might replies that it's a good thing. The tournament continues until it's Izuku's turn again, during the match between Izuku and Shoto, All Might watches on, worried about his student's health. After Izuku states to Shoto that becoming number one without his full strength as well as to disown someone is a joke, All Might remembers Endeavor's words of making his son surpass him. Soon after remembering, All Might theorizes to himself that Shoto won't use his firepower due to the discord between him and his father. He then tries to figure out what Izuku is trying to do. After Shoto activates his firepower, All Might concludes that Izuku is trying to save Shoto from his cruel fate, despite wanting to win. All Might notes that Izuku is going out of his way to help his opponent, causing him to wonder, which of them is the joke? After Izuku is defeated by Shoto, All Might goes to Recovery Girl's nurse's office to see Izuku. She scolds All Might for making Izuku push his limits and tells All Might not to try and praise Izuku for going so far. When Izuku apologizes to All Might for not living up to his expectations, All Might's face is filled with regret. After Izuku tells All Might that all he wanted to do was help Shoto and asks for forgiveness, All Might responds by saying that his match was simply an unfortunate outcome, but praises Izuku for helping Shoto with his problem, saying that reaching out and helping people with their personal problems is one of the principal qualities of being a hero happy that Izuku has such a quality. After Izuku's surgery is finished, Chiyo tells All Might to try and find a different method for Izuku to use his one for all. Izuku leaves Chiyo's room with All Might and they walk down the corridor. Izuku sadly tells All Might that he thinks someone else should be his successor. However, All Might tells Izuku that he used to be quirkless just like him, which surprises Izuku. Izuku says to All Might that he never knew about that information, causing All Might to reply that Izuku never asked him. All Might tells Izuku that he chose him to be his successor at first due to him being similar to his former self and admits to Izuku that he has surpassed his expectations after seeing Izuku's actions. He then says to Izuku that he'll only be able to truly shine with the power of one for all. Having been cheered by his mentor, Izuku apologizes to All Might. All Might tells him to watch the rest of the UA Sports Festival, to which he complies. All Might, in his hero form, appears at the closing ceremony of UA Sports Festival to hand out medals to the winner of the freshman stage, Fumikage, Shoto, and Katsuki. As All Might makes his way into the stadium, Midnight unintentionally talks over him, ruining All Might's entrance. All Might gives Fumikage his medal for placing third, congratulating and acknowledging his strength. He gives Fumikage a pat on the back and a congratulatory hug telling Fumikage that in order to defeat his problem with unfavorable matchups, he shouldn't always rely on his quirk, and that he should increase his own strength to deal with unfavorable matchups better. 
All Might gives Shoto his medal for placing second, congratulating him and understanding that Shoto had his reasons for suppressing his fireside in the final match. After Shoto tells All Might that he must come to terms with things to solve his problems, All Might gives Shoto a congratulatory hug, saying to Shoto that he won't pry any further and that he knows fully well that Shoto can solve anything with his power. All Might then goes to give Katsuki his medal for first place, finding the restraints to be a little too much. All Might takes Katsuki's face mask off, causing Katsuki to angrily yell that he doesn't deserve to be number one. However, All Might tells Katsuki that society will acknowledge him as number one, even if he doesn't. All Might gives Katsuki his medal. No hug. Afterwards, All Might gives a speech to everyone saying that everyone who participated in the sports festival had a chance to stand on the podium. He goes on to say that the future generation of heroes looks bright. All Might yells out, great work, much to the confusion of the crowd who thought he would yell plus ultra, causing him to reply that he thought great work would be far more appreciative. Versus Hero Killer Arc. All Might's in UA's faculty room. Ken Ishiyama informs All Might that a new nomination has just arrived for the freshman, telling All Might that the nomination is for Izuku. Excited, All Might goes to check who nominated Izuku. As he checks, All Might becomes flabbergasted at the person who nominated him. After school that day, All Might appears in front of Izuku as he's about to leave class. All Might and Izuku walk along the corridor, and he says that Izuku received a nomination, much to Izuku's surprise. All Might tells Izuku that the person who nominated him was Gran Torino. And he explains that Gran Torino was a pro hero who taught at UA for one year and that he was also his homeroom teacher. All Might says that Gran Torino was a close friend of his predecessor, but now he's in retirement. He says that Gran Torino knows about the one for all quirk, which is the reason why he must have nominated Izuku. Shaking nervously, All Might wonders if Gran Torino was compelled to nominate Izuku due to him thinking that his guidance towards Izuku was lacking, becoming terrified by the fact that he's taking up his hero name again. While trying to stop his legs from shaking, All Might tells Izuku that while it's his duty to train him, he should select Gran Torino as his workplace of choice and see what he can learn from him. Before leaving, All Might informs Izuku that his hero costume has been repaired. Naomasa meets with All Might at UA. He tells All Might that the police force had tried everything to get information out Nomu. However, everything they tried didn't work. Naomasa says that they instead looked into Nomu's background through DNA analysis and have discovered that Nomu was once a human with a criminal record. He explains that the DNA analysis also revealed that Nomu has the DNA of at least four different humans mixed with his own. He concludes that Nomu is an artificial human made to measure up to multiple quirks and that having all the DNA in his body as well as his body modified caused Nomu's brain activity to stop. Now Masa tells All Might that the real issue is that Nomu's DNA is a primary concern because it contains multiple quirks. He says that Nomu couldn't have acquired multiple quirks in any way, unless Nomu acquired the quirks through advanced genetic familial permeation. Now Masa comes to the conclusion that someone with a quirk that can grant quirks is behind Nomu's acquisition of multiple quirks. All Might becomes concerned as he fears that the certain someone has returned. After Stain's defeat is published, Gran Torino speaks to All Might using a telephone. He expresses his annoyance that his pay has been cut in half and his right to teach is revoked for half a year, but says that considering the circumstances, he doesn't mind. Gran Torino tells All Might that Izuku has improved drastically in using One For All, saying that Izuku's movements are similar to his own. All Might apologizes profusely and thanks Gran Torino for his help, admitting that his teachings towards Izuku has been inadequate. Gran Torino says that he only became qualified as a teacher so that he could keep his promise to Shimura, All Might's predecessor. All Might thanks Gran Torino for everything, as he wouldn't have been the man he is today without him. Gran Torino brings up that All Might never visits him, to which All Might nervously says that his teacher's life was busy before his master tells him that he's calling him about the encounter with the hero killer. He admits that Stain's strong ideology is similar to All Might's. Gran Torino says that if Stain's backstory is revealed to the public through the use of media, villainy will rise and the League of Villains will take credit as a group following Stain's ideology due to the connections between them, which will cause delinquents to join the League of Villains. He also states that he believes that an old enemy will use Stain's backstory to remove obstacles in his path. Gran Torino hypothesizes that the old enemy, the villain who killed All Might's predecessor and gave All Might his scars, all for one, has returned. All Might is in disbelief that All For One had survived, not wanting to believe it given the serious injuries All Might inflicted on him. Gran Torino advises All Might to reveal to Izuku everything about himself and One For All when the opportunity arises. The workplace training comes to an end and Class 1A returns to UA. Class 1A's next class is Foundational Hero Studies with All Might. All Might says that their lesson will be a rescue training race through Playing Ground Gamma, a construction site with many densely packed lanes which makes it look like a labyrinth. 
The class must race through the construction site and to the area in the middle to meet up with All Might. Class 1A will split up into four groups of five for the training lesson. Izuku, along with Mashira Ojiro, Tenya, Mina Ashido, and Hanta Sero are the first group that will partake in the rescue training race. All Might watches the race and is surprised and amazed at Izuku's new control of his quirk and his movements. After the race ends, All Might commends the group on improving their quirks more broadly since entering UA. He also asks them to prepare for the end of term task. All Might then approaches Izuku, telling him that he's impressed with his improvement and gives him a thumbs up. He also tells Izuku that after the lesson's finished, he should come to his place because he wants to talk to Izuku about the story of him and One for All. All Might meets with Izuku in the break room. He tells Izuku to lock the door and then apologizes to Izuku for not being at his side during the Hosu incident, to which Izuku replies that he doesn't have to apologize. All Might says that Izuku's blood was ingested by the hero killer, reminding Izuku about One for All's transfer and inheritance method, causing Izuku to panic, thinking that One for All is in Stain's possession. However, All Might tells Izuku that he still has One for All because One for All will not be transferred to a new recipient unless the user wishes it. Thus, One for All cannot be forcibly stolen, although it can be forcibly passed on. All Might tells Izuku that One for All is a special quirk and begins to tell him One for All's origin. He says that One for All is derived from a quirk that existed since the beginning. All Might says that long ago, during the quirk phenomenon, society had not adapted to the idea of having quirks, which caused an age of upheaval to arise. A man possessing a quirk called All for One, a quirk that can seal quirks and grant them, stole many quirks and used this new overwhelming power and influence to gather and unify people under his command. The man used the people he gathered as pawns for his plans, which allowed him to take over Japan and make himself its evil ruler. Izuku says that he's heard the rumors, but this story isn't in any textbook, causing All Might to reply that underground dealings are never recorded in the textbooks. Izuku asks how this man is related to One for All. All Might says that All for One can grant quirks, but those who are not able to handle the strain become brain dead like Nomu. He explains that there were cases for those who did survive the procedure where the quirks mutated. All Might tells Izuku another story. The man, who would eventually become Japan's evil ruler, had a younger brother. The man used All for One and forcibly gave his younger brother a quirk that stockpiles power. However, the younger brother already had a quirk, a quirk that can transfer itself to others. The younger brother's quirks, one that stockpiles power and the other that can transfer itself, merged and became one for all. All Might notes the irony that justice was born in the bowels of evil. Izuku says that it's impossible for the man who ruled Japan in the distant past to be alive, and All Might theorizes that the man stole a quirk that stopped his aging, or a quirk that granted him immortality. All Might explains that the younger brother, whose quirks became one for all, fought against his older brother but couldn't defeat him. The younger brother decided to pass on one for all to the next generation so that one day it'll accumulate enough power to defeat the older brother's all for one. All Might says that he was finally the successor that defeated the older brother, or so he thought. All Might tells Izuku that the man possessing all for one has returned and is leading the League of Villains. All Might finishes his story by saying that one for all is a power that is meant to stop all for one and that Izuku will also have to confront the man. All Might apologizes for giving Izuku so much information but Izuku says that whatever task All Might gives him, he'll accomplish no matter what, as long as All Might's by his side. All Might's not able to bring himself to tell Izuku that he won't be able to remain by his side when the time comes, but thanks him instead. Final Exams Arc UA's first term final exam are mandatory exams taken by UA's Hero Department students at the end of the first semester. It consists of two exams, a written one and a practical test in which the students must face the teachers in mock battles. Izuku and Katsuki are paired together and must fight All Might in their end of term exercise. All Might, Izuku, and Katsuki get onto the bus and drive to an uninhabited city where the test exercise will take place. They arrive in the city and All Might explains the test exercise. Izuku and Katsuki have two options of winning and passing the test exercise. They must either handcuff All Might or one of them must escape from the battlefield. Izuku notes that this will test their fight or flight decision skills. All Might puts on super compact weighted bracelets to give himself a handicap. The test exercise begins. After a while passes, Izuku and Katsuki begin arguing. Suddenly, All Might throws a punch which devastates the area Izuku and Katsuki are in. All Might says that he'll have to get involved. Izuku's shocked at the level of All Might's strength, even though he knows that All Might's handicapped and severely weakened to begin with. All Might declares to the duo that he's a villain and collateral damage means nothing to him, so he charges at the duo. Feeling All Might's pressure, Izuku tells Katsuki that they have no chance of winning and should run away. 
However, Kotsky refuses to run away. He uses Stun Grenade against All Might, which distracts him and charges at All Might, but the symbol of peace grabs Kotsky's face, stopping his advance. Kotsky launches a flurry of explosions against All Might. However, Kotsky's explosions don't even scratch him. All Might slams Kotsky down into the ground and turns his attention to Izuku, who planned on running away. All Might questions Izuku on his decision to escape, and Izuku recalls the Hero Killer and activates One For All full cowl, wondering why he suddenly recalled the Hero Killer. Izuku jumps into the air, but Kotsky also jumps into the air, and the duo collides into each other as a result. All Might appears in the air with a guardrail in his hands, and slams the guardrail on Izuku, which pins him down to the ground. Then, All Might punches Kotsky in the stomach, greatly injuring him and sending him flying backwards. All Might approaches Kotsky and says that he understands his jealousy of Izuku's sudden growth, and tells Kotsky that what he's currently doing is a waste and must grow his willingness to borrow other people's strength. The weakened Kotsky struggles to get up and tells All Might that if he must rely on other people's strength, then he would rather lose. Disappointed with Kotsky's decision, All Might prepares to finish him off. Kotsky tries to move, but to no avail. Suddenly, Izuku activates One For All Full Cowl and breaks free of the guardrail and charges and punches Kotsky out of harm's way. All Might chases after Izuku and Kotsky. Suddenly, Kotsky appears from behind and attacks All Might with an explosion which distracts him. However, one of Kotsky's grenadier bracers is missing. Suddenly, Izuku appears behind All Might with Kotsky's missing grenade bracers equipped on him. Kotsky yells to Izuku to commence his attack and Izuku aims the grenade bracer at All Might and releases the grenade pin. It blasts an immense explosion at All Might at point-blank range. After explosions finished, Izuku and Kotsky dash towards the exit. All Might easily takes the explosion, only coughing up a little blood. All Might's impressed by the duo's strategy, and notes that while the relationship won't improve immediately, Izuku and Kotsky's cooperation with each other in this practical test will be a great leap forward for them in the future. All Might catches up to Izuku and Kotsky and defeats them. All Might pins Kotsky down to the ground with his foot and dangles Izuku in the air with his arm. He praises Izuku and Kotsky for working together to try and defeat him, but reminds them that working together is merely a prerequisite of the practical test. Kotsky finally understands that All Might is far too overpowered for him to stop and realizes that All Might is truly the strongest hero and the world's most skyscraping wall. Izuku tries activating One For All Full Cowl, but All Might stops him and throws him onto the ground. All Might decides to finish off Izuku and Kotsky. Suddenly, Kotsky gets up and launches a big explosion against All Might, which distracts the symbol of peace. While All Might's distracted by the light, Kotsky grabs Izuku and throws Izuku towards the escape gate with an explosion. To prevent Izuku from escaping, All Might uses New Hampshire Smash and blasts himself into Izuku, which crushes Izuku due to All Might's great weight and sends him tumbling down. Kotsky chases after All Might and tells All Might that the Grenadier Bracers were to help him use his maximum explosions without risk, and admits that he was a fool for thinking that he could win without taking risks. Kotsky uses a huge explosion against All Might, similar to the explosion in the UA Sports Festival, and tells Izuku to escape, but Izuku struggles to get up. Kotsky decides to sacrifice himself to hold off All Might so that Izuku has time to escape, and uses another huge explosion against All Might. However, although the Great Explosions have distracted All Might, the symbol of peace is still unscathed. Izuku successfully activates One For All Full Cowl and begins his escape while All Might smashes Kotsky into the ground. Izuku sees that Kotsky is in trouble. Despite being greatly injured, Kotsky yells to Izuku to escape and bites All Might's hand. All Might ignores Kotsky's desperate attempt and tells Izuku that he won't let him escape. Surprisingly, Izuku doesn't rush towards the escape gate. Instead, Izuku rushes back to help Kotsky. While rushing to help, Izuku remembers All Might's words, that when times are scary and uncertain, you face it all with a smile. Izuku smiles and punches All Might in the face. While All Might's suffering from the slight recoil, Izuku grabs Kotsky, who's fallen unconscious. Izuku rushes towards the escape gate with Kotsky in tow. All Might shrugs off Izuku's punch and watches him escape. All Might understands by now that Izuku is the type of person to save somebody, and notes that whenever Izuku tries to save somebody, there's never a wall in his way. After Izuku and Kotsky pass the practical exam, All Might carries them to Recovery Girl's tent to be healed. Recovery Girl scolds All Might for not restraining himself during his battle with Izuku and Kotsky. She asks All Might to take Izuku and Kotsky back to UA to recover. Forest Training Camp Arc After the hero incident involving Izuku and Tomura Shigaraki occurs, Toshinori goes to the police station. Outside the police station, Toshinori greets Izuku and Naomasa, and apologizes to Izuku for not being there. 
Thinking about his conversation with Tomura, Izuku asks Toshinori if there were times when he failed to save someone. Toshinori tells Izuku that there were many times he couldn't save someone, and modestly admits that he's only human and can't save everyone. Toshinori notes that his title, the symbol of peace, serves to inspire people and heroes to play their roles so that more people can be saved. Izuku's mother arrives to pick Izuku up, and Izuku comforts his crying mother, telling her that everything's fine. After Izuku and his mother leave, now Masa theorizes that Tomura will probably target other students and decides that hero schools must exercise more caution and become more proactive at implementing countermeasures against villains. Now Masa advises Toshinori that leaving Yue is also an option, but Toshinori decides against it. Now Masa concludes their conversation by saying they'll capture All for One this time, to which Toshinori agrees. When summer break begins, students go to a training camp to improve their quirks. But on the third day of training, the League of Villains attacks the place and kidnaps Kotsky, leaving several villains and professors hospitalized. One day later, after the League of Villains Vanguard Action Squad captures Kotsky, Toshinori is in a meeting with UA faculty. In the meeting, Toshinori is ashamed of himself for lounging around while his students were out fighting for their lives. Toshinori leaves the meeting when he gets a phone call from Naomasa, who informs him that they've located the League of Villains hideout and requests his help in the rescue operation. Before carrying out the operation, All Might and Naomasa visit Momo at the hospital. She explains that Yosetsu Awase had planted a transmitter she had created onto one of the villains and handed a device to All Might that will allow him to locate the transmitter. All Might applauds Momo's growth and found her to be worthy of being a hero, asking her to leave the rescue of Kotsky to him. Hideout Raid Arc The following evening, Toshinori along with the police force and a large number of pro heroes await for their infiltration of the League of Villains hideout. While waiting, Toshinori and Gran Torino converse to each other that All for One's making his move. The infiltration begins with the police force and the pro heroes standing outside of the League of Villains hideout. Toshinori prepares to attack. He breaks into the villain hideout with Kamui Wood swinging in and restraining the League of Villains with his lacquered chain prison while Gran Torino stops Dobby from using his quirk with his kick. Toshinori checks Katsuki and compliments him for not being afraid, much to Katsuki's chagrin. After Kurogiri's attempt to bringing the Nomus fail, Toshinori criticizes Tomura for underestimating them and declares that it's game over for him and his League of Villains. However, Tomura refutes Toshinori's claim and orders Kurogiri to create portals so that they can escape, but Edshot knocks Kurogiri unconscious. Gran Torino asks Tomura the location of his boss all for one. Tomura doesn't answer and instead screams out his hatred for Toshinori. Suddenly, a mysterious black liquid appears out of thin air, with Nomu's appearing out of the phenomenon which surprises the League of Villains and the pro heroes. Edshot notices that the black liquid isn't Kurigiri's doing since he's unconscious. More Nomu's begin appearing from the masses of the mysterious black liquid. Toshinori grabs Kotsky. However, Kotsky begins dissolving into the black liquid and disappears, much to Toshinori's fury. Four Nomu's attack Toshinori and he defeats them with Oklahoma Smash. Outside the hideout, Naomasa along with Enji and the police force continue battling dozens of Nomus and have the upper hand. Toshinori appears and decides to leave the rest to Enji. Toshinori manages to find All for One and attacks him, but he blocks the attack. Toshinori declares that he'll take everything back while All for One wonders if the symbol of peace will attempt to kill him again. All Might and All for One clash, which creates a shockwave that sends Kotsky, Tomura, and the Vanguard Action Squad backwards. Both All for One and All Might criticize each other for becoming weaker. All Might declares that he'll save Katsuki and won't repeat the same mistake as he did five years ago, and this time, he'll definitely put All for One behind bars along with the League of Villains. All Might charges at All for One. However, All for One sends a huge blast wave at All Might, causing the symbol of peace to be sent flying away at great force. All for One's blast wave not only hits All Might, but destroys several buildings in the process. Despite being sent several miles away, All Might quickly recuperates and returns to the battlefield by jumping to it, refusing to allow All for One to escape, and charges at him. All Might and All for One clash once again. Suddenly, Izuku, Eijiro, and Tenya appear above in the air, which All for One sees and attempts to attack them, but All Might intervenes by punching All for One. All Might is surprised with Izuku and the other students' presence, while All Might himself is still surprised that Izuku and some of his fellow students came to rescue Katsuki. However, All Might's pleased with their intervention, as he can now fight All for One without holding back. All Might charges at All for One, but All for One uses his warp quirk to teleport Gran Torino in front of him, using the elderly hero as a human shield, which causes Gran Torino to take All Might's attack instead. Let me just say, when I watched that, I was just, I felt all the broken bones in my body. 
and I don't even have broken bones. I've never broken a bone, but I felt it. Anyway, All For One expresses his hatred for All Might, as he's the one who brought down his comrades in the past, and while he descended into darkness, All Might rose to the top as the symbol of peace. All For One prepares to fire his blast wave move. However, All Might pulls Gran Torino away and uses Detroit Smash to cancel out All For One's blast wave move. All For One sees that his destruction of the city has brought chaos and decides to put the innocent civilians in danger so that All Might won't be able to fight at full strength. Furious with All For One's sadism, All Might grabs his arm while throwing Gran Torino away for safety. All Might admonishes All For One for all the despicable crimes he's committed and for his misanthropy. All Might punches All For One in the face, shattering his mask. However, All Might's punch wasn't strong enough to finish off All For One. As Gran Torino calls out to him, All Might turns back into his true form. All For One says that All Might wouldn't be the first to criticize him as he's heard those same lines before, from the previous One For All successor, Nana Shimura. All Might, whose face has partially reverted to its true form, is angry at All For One for mentioning his predecessor's name. All For One notes that Nana Shimura was all bark and no bite, only going on about her ideals and not even being strong. All For One mocks Nana for her uselessness and mentions that she died an embarrassing and shameful death. Furious, All Might prepares to attack All For One. However, All For One uses his blast wave technique against All Might, causing the symbol of peace to be blasted into the air. Gran Torino catches All Might and lands him safely on the ground, and advises All Might not to listen to All For One's provocations and that due to All For One's different quirk usage and strategies, he should only attack when All For One lets his guard down. Up in the sky, news helicopters are broadcasting the battle. All For One decides to sever the trust in heroes once and for all. All For One once again expresses his hatred for All Might due to taking something away from him and wants him to die in the most gruesome way possible. All For One fires another blast wave attack at All Might. All Might, seeing that an innocent civilian is trapped under rubble behind him, blocks All For One's blast wave attack, which saves the civilian from being harmed. However, All Might, who blocked the blast wave attack, has caused him to expend his power and he reverts back to his true form. All For One relishes in the fact that All Might's true form has been exposed for all to see. Everyone around the country sees All Might's true form and begins panicking. All For One mocks All Might for the pitiful state he's in. However, All Might doesn't care about his rotting body nor his exposure to the world. He declares that his spirit burns strongly, which is what truly matters. Wanting to break his spirit, All For One reveals that Tomura Shigaraki is Nana Shimura's grandson, which demoralizes All Might. All Might refuses to believe, but All For One tells the symbol of peace that it's the truth. All For One wonders why All Might isn't smiling, and sarcastically remarks about All Might's smile, which is something Nana would always do. All Might's spirit is greatly demoralized by All For One's sarcasm, while All For One continues relishing in All Might's pitiful state. However, before he could fall in complete despair, the innocent civilian under the rubble encourages All Might to win and help her. Around the country, the people who are watching refuse to believe that All Might will lose, even though he isn't at his best, and don't care about his true form since he has attained victory one way or another. Many citizens who are watching rally behind All Might and encourage him to win. In response to this, Izuku and Katsuki also encourage All Might, shouting at him to win. Invigorated by the civilian pleas, All Might regains hope as he activates One for All throughout the right side of his body, transforming it back into its hero form. All Might smiles and states that heroes have many things to protect, which is why they don't lose. Growing tired with the sentimental talk, All For One activates numerous amounts of his ultimate combination, causing it to become an enlarged mutated arm filled with numerous deadly screws and hardened minerals. All For One charges at All Might with his heavily empowered and mutated arm. While heading towards All Might, All For One knows from battling him that All Might no longer has One For All and tells All Might that the person who was given One For All by him is Izuku Midoriya. All For One taunts All Might by saying that he has also failed as a teacher towards Izuku due to his apprentice's recklessness. Both All For One and All Might clash by punching each other with their enhanced fists, which creates a huge shockwave that devastates a great portion of the city. As they struggle, All For One uses his impact recoil quirk to revert all the damage to All Might. However, All Might transfers One For All to his other arm, sacrificing his right arm, but renders impact recoil ineffective. He then counters by throwing his empowered left arm and punch at All For One, who's left his guard open. All Might has punched All For One, successfully hitting him. However, the punch All Might delivered was meant to only lower All For One's guard, which worked. All Might transfers One For All to his right arm, 
and prepares for the final attack he will ever use. All Might uses United States of Smash on All For One, which creates a great shockwave. After the dust clears, All For One is in a crater, badly beaten and unconscious. All Might raises his arm to signify his victory. All Might transforms into his hero form while raising his arms, signifying that he's still the symbol of peace, which causes the citizens watching to start celebrating. With the battle over, pro heroes begin carrying out rescue operations to save people who are trapped under rubble as a result of All Might and All For One's battle. Meanwhile, Endeavor and All Might watch All For One being placed in an Iron Maiden. Now that All For One is properly imprisoned, All Might points to the camera and delivers a message. You're next. The citizens watching take All Might's message as a warning to all villains out there, causing the citizens to praise All Might and start celebrating again. However, Izuku knows what All Might's message truly means, that his time as symbol of peace has come to an end, and he, Izuku, is the next successor. Izuku now realizes that All Might's time has truly come to an end and starts crying. At a hospital, All Might, who is bandaged and recovering, states that he can no longer use One For All, and that although he can no longer be the symbol of peace, he still has things to do. Now Masa is in disbelief that Tomura Shigaraki is Nana Shimura's grandson. On that topic, Gran Torino comments that Nana Shimura and her husband had a child. However, after her husband died due to heroics, Nana sent her son to a foster family so that he can stay away from the world of heroics. Nana then informed Gran Torino and Toshinori to not get involved with her son. All Might wishes to find Tomura. However, Gran Torino tells All Might that he's in no position to help Tomura since he wouldn't be able to see Tomura as a villain. Gran Torino and Naomasa decide that they will handle the search for Tomura. Gran Torino suggests to All Might that he must remain at UA and carry out what he must still do, helping his successor, Izuku Midoriya. All Might meets Izuku at the Takoba Municipal Beach Park and greets him with a Texas smash to the face as part of his scolding. All Might reveals to Izuku that he can no longer use One For All and demonstrates this by entering his hero form, only to exit it in a split second afterward. All Might informs Izuku that he's retiring as a hero since he's in a state where he can't fight anymore. He scolds Izuku for never doing what he's told and for his recklessness in rescuing Katsuki. However, All Might's glad that his recklessness didn't get him injured this time and is proud of Izuku for that. All Might hugs Izuku and apologizes for not being a proper mentor towards him. But from now on, he'll focus solely on Izuku's development and training. Izuku begins to cry, to which All Might scolds him for again. All Might returns to Ue, where Nezu thanks him for saving the day. Principal Nezu announces a plan that he would like to implement, transitioning Ue to a boarding school as a means to mitigate the safety issues and asks for Shota's cooperation. Shota and All Might visit the homes of Class 1A. He and All Might visit Kyoka's home, where Kyoka's father is not happy with Yue's safety measures and has doubts in Yue's ability to protect her if she were to relocate to Yue's dormitories. Kyoka tells Shota to relax as her father has already agreed to allow her to relocate to Yue's dormitories. Shota and All Might visit Katsuki's home, where Katsuki's mother is more than happy to allow her son to relocate to Yue's dormitories. As Shota and All Might leave the Bakugo household, Katsuki appears and asks All Might what Izuku is to him. Unable to tell Katsuki the truth, All Might informs him that Izuku is a student to him who has great potential just like Katsuki. Satisfied to a degree with All Might's answer, Katsuki thanks All Might for everything and goes back inside his house. Shota decides to visit the other Class 1A families by himself while All Might goes to visit Izuku. All Might enters the Midoriya household, being kind of uncomfortable with the home since it possesses a lot of fan memorabilia of him. Izuku and his mother are flabbergasted that the number one hero has entered their abode. After the three sit down at the table, All Might asks Izuku's mother for her permission to send Izuku to the UA dorms. However, Inko is against it. Inko explains that she's worried about her son since his quirk damages him rather than helps him and is deeply concerned about her son's future as a pro hero after witnessing All Might's brutal battle. Unable to bear the fact that Izuku will also have to face such bloody battles with no hope of ever gaining full recovery. Inko states that she has no confidence in Yue and is unable to entrust her son to them. Izuku tries to convince his mother that his injuries are a result of his inability to control his quirk but Inko replies that regardless, it's still the responsibility of Yue to take care of their students, which they haven't done. Inko understands that she's being a strict parent, but the safety of her child is her number one priority, and she's fine with Izuku continuing to become a hero since it's his dream as long as he's in a safe environment, which is why she wants to send Izuku to another school. 
although he understands his mother, Izuku wants to continue his dream at UA, since that's where All Might became a hero. Izuku runs out of the room while All Might understands Izuku's frustration, that it must be painful to not being able to study at the same place his idol went to. Izuku returns to the room with the letter in his hand. The letter is a thank you from Kota. Izuku tells his mother that at the training camp, he saved a boy named Kota, who hated quirks and heroes because of a villain. Izuku understands that he has a long way to go, but for a little while, Kota and his thank you letter made him a hero. Izuku declares that even if he can't study at UA, he'll still keep dreaming to become this hero. All Might is shocked that Izuku's willing to continue his dream even though it's not at the same place as his idol, and is glad that he's going on his own path instead of following him, his idol. All Might transforms into his hero form and kneels before Izuku and Inko, bowing his head much to their shock. All Might apologizes to Inko for his negligence as Izuku's teacher, and understands that she's worried about the bloody path of a hero. All Might asks Inko to allow him to walk together with Izuku down his path so that he doesn't have a bloody future. The former symbol of peace also understands Inko's concerns about the current UA and tells her that they're reforming their ways. All Might promises that he'll nurture and protect Izuku, even at the cost of his own life. Inko is shocked at All Might's resolve, causing her to fall to her knees. Inko states that all she wants is Izuku to be happy and tells All Might that he should never trade his life away for someone else's sake. Inko tells All Might to continue living and that as long as he can protect and nurture Izuku, she'll reconsider her decision to not send Izuku to live at UA. All Might pledges to protect and nurture Izuku, while Izuku tells his mother that he won't worry her. Outside, All Might compliments Izuku's mother, telling Izuku that she reminds him of his master. All Might leaves and tells Izuku that he'll see him at UA. Provisional Hero License Exam Arc The students train under the supervision of Shota, Cementos, Midnight, and Ectoplasm in Gym Gamma. The goal is to develop their quirks and special techniques before the Provisional Hero License Exam. All Might appears at the entrance to the gym because he wants to help. Shota tells him that he should focus on recovering, but All Might replies that it's his job as a teacher to oversee the training of his students. When Kotsky defeated an ectoplasm clone, Shota and All Might comment on Kotsky's prowess and that he'll only keep growing stronger from here on out. The other students of Class 1A continue their training and thinking about their special moves while Izuku's still puzzled on what to do next. All Might approaches him and gives Izuku advice. He's still trying too hard to imitate him, which confuses Izuku. Before he can question further, All Might moves on to give advice to Eijiro Kirishima. All Might's teaching Izuku to think independently. Shota wonders why he's suddenly interested in helping students when he spots a book sticking out of his back pocket. Even dummies can be teachers. Easy education theory. Shota is stunned. Four days later at Gym Gamma, in the midst of training, All Might shows up and Shota Aizawa tells him that Class 1A are progressing nicely. However, the rock Kotsky used to test his AP shot cracks and begins falling towards All Might. Kotsky and Shota warn All Might, but Izuku jumps out and destroys the falling wall with a single kick, showing his new fighting style, which he names one for all full cowl shoot style. All Might smiles at Izuku in approval. All Might comments that Izuku's new fighting style is a big step in the right direction and will help him in the provisional hero license exam. Shota warns All Might to stay a safe distance away from the training session to avoid being injured. All Might apologizes to Kotsky, who storms off shortly after telling All Might to be more careful. The former symbol of peace is staggered about the fact that throughout his life, he's been protecting others. Now, All Might realizes that he needs others to protect him and is perturbed by the role change. Several days later, while the students of UA participate in the provisional hero license exam, All Might goes to Tartarus, a special prison for criminals whom the death penalty is not enough. All Might's there to sit down and speak with All for One. All for One tries taunting him, asking where Gran Torino is and why he's come dressed in his hero costume. All Might ignores him, asking where Tomura is. All for One states that he doesn't know and has allowed his successor to carry on his will. All Might tries to ask how he's still alive, and All for One doesn't answer and says it's a pointless question. He begins taunting All Might by saying society is beginning to turn on heroes, while sensing growing insecurity in the world due to the new hero's leader, Endeavor. All Might stands up in anger while someone on the radio comms asks him to please back away. He states that he won't die and won't allow Tomura to kill him. All Might leaves while All For One continues to taunt him. After leaving, he's in a car speaking with Naomasa. He then receives a text from Izuku with a picture of his provisional license saying, thanks to you, I was able to take another step forward, which causes All Might to smile, though he doesn't reply to the text. He's a terrible texter. 
Same as me. That same night, he gets word that Izuku and Katsuki are fighting. He goes to stop the fight, but instead he stands back out of sight, allowing the two boys to fight it out while eavesdropping on their conversation. After Katsuki pins Izuku down, he walks up to them. He apologizes to Katsuki for not realizing that he's been blaming himself for All Might's condition. Katsuki asks why All Might chose Izuku as his successor. He states that despite being powerless, he was more of a hero than anybody else on the day of the sludge villain attack, and he judged it was his responsibility to help Izuku stand in the arena instead of Katsuki who was already standing in it. Katsuki yells that he's weak and because of it, All Might became like he is. All Might goes up to Katsuki stating that it wasn't his fault and apologizes for not realizing his pain sooner. He hugs Katsuki, but is pushed away. He then gives advice to Katsuki and Izuku, stating that to be a hero, one needs to both want to rescue and win, and if either is lacking, they'll lose their sense of justice. He tells them that if they can recognize each other and raise each other up, both of them can be heroes who both win and rescue. All Might then proceeds to tell Katsuki everything about One For All and how he passed it to Izuku. After hearing it, Katsuki realizes how dangerous of a secret it is and promises not to tell anyone. Back at Heights Alliance, Shoto restrains the tandem and punishes them for breaking the rules. All Might tries to calm him down by telling him that the fight was brought about due to Katsuki feeling guilty about his retirement. Although he understands the reason, Shota still refuses to let Izuku and Katsuki's transgression of fighting go by, and gives them house arrest as an appropriate punishment. Shie Hasaikai Arc Several days later, after Shota Aizawa spoke to Class 1A about hero work studies, Izuku goes to All Might in the staff room and asks him to introduce him to Sir Night Eye for a hero work study. All Might refuses to help Izuku, much to his surprise. All Might says that there are three reasons for his decision. First, he was against letting the first years conduct hero work studies so early. Second, he wants Izuku to focus on strengthening his one-for-all full cowl shoot style. And third, he and Night Eye broke off their partnership not in the best way several years ago. Izuku tells All Might that if he's under the guidance of Night Eye, it'll serve as a strong point of comparison to him, and he must become stronger than anyone else. All Might doesn't dislike Izuku's determination, but he still will not be getting an introduction, not from him at least, so he calls Izuku and Mirio Togata to the nap room to talk about a few things. All Might tells Izuku that Mirio is serving a hero work studies under Night Eye, and asks Mirio if Izuku is fit to work under Night Eye. Mirio replies that there isn't any problem, and considers Izuku fit. However, Mirio doesn't understand why it's not All Might who presents Izuku to Night Eye, since they were friends and allies, and Night Eye still has great respect for him. All Might replies that he doesn't feel comfortable meeting Night Eye because he became exactly what Night Eye warned him about. All Might allows Izuku to carry out his work studies under the guidance of Sir Night Eye. However, Izuku's first day is full of bitter revelations. Izuku discovers the truth about One For All, that he was not the right candidate to inherit it, and that Mirio was the true successor of All Might as a symbol of peace. This makes Izuku start to doubt himself. Unable to keep going like this, Izuku goes out on a search for All Might to ask him questions, and finds him outside of UA, jogging. Izuku asks him why he didn't tell him anything about Sir Night Eye, and that he knew about One For All, and that Mirio was supposed to be the true inheritor of the quirk. All Might states that there wasn't a need to tell him everything, to which Izuku yells that there was, and demands to know the whole truth. All Might decides to tell Izuku the truth, but he mustn't regret it, to which Izuku replies that he won't. All Might starts telling him that Sir Night Eye was a sidekick for years, and that they formed a great team. But six years ago, after his fight against All For One, they dissolved their partnership due to his injuries and because of the differences in their values. Night Eye, warning him back then to stop continuing his hero duties due to his grievous injuries and look for a successor. He refused because that would generate a period of fear and chaos. Sir Night Eye revealed to him that the real reason he wanted Toshinori to stop is because he predicted his gruesome death at the hands of a villain in six to seven years. After their argument, they went their separate ways. Nezu recommended Mirio Togata, but he ended up meeting Izuku before he met Mirio. All Might didn't want to tell Izuku all of this since he was a fan and apologizes. Izuku is shocked and distraught with the truth All Might told him. Not only was he never meant to be All Might's successor, but also that All Might has roughly a year to live. All Might continues and tells him that when he met him, he considered him the perfect candidate to inherit one for all. Toshinori told Night Eye about this, but Night Eye was vehemently against All Might's idea. Izuku asks Toshinori if Night Eye's foresight can be changed. However, Toshinori's answer crushes Izuku's hope. There's a margin of error in his estimation, 
but nothing can change the future he sees in his foresight. Toshinari tells Izuku that after, he had accepted his inevitable death with ease, and because the goal was in sight, he ran full speed towards it. Toshinori reveals that the goal was his final confrontation with All for One at Kamino, and that he had planned on dying there. However, Izuku was there, a timid, quirkless boy who day after day rose to meet his expectations. Izuku's determination and his mother's encouragement gave him the will to twist Night Eye's prediction and try to stay alive to see the boy grow into a hero worthy of being the symbol of peace. Izuku promises All Might that they will defy fate together. Days later, Deku participates in the raid against Shie Asaikai, a police operation organized by Sir Night Eye to dismantle the criminal organization, arrest its members, and rescue Eri. The operation successfully ends as Izuku defeats Overhaul and restrains Eri, but Mirio loses his quirk when injected with the drug, and Sir Night Eye is fatally injured during his fight against Overhaul. Sir Night Eye's wounds are too serious, and the doctors tell everyone that he won't last. Bubble Girl, one of Sir Night Eye's sidekicks, calls All Might so that he can see him at his last moments. Night Eye remarks on how fitting it is for his mentor to visit him one last time on his deathbed. All Might laments on not visiting him before and begs his old friend to pull through so that he can make amends. Izuku begs Sir Night Eye to live as Sir Night Eye claims that he doesn't blame All Might and only wanted him to be happy and is fine with All Might fighting against fate. Sir Night Eyes wanted to change All Might's future where he's murdered, but couldn't find any answers. However, Izuku showed him the way. Sir Night Eye hypothesizes that everyone's wishes for a better future changed the outcome. All Might and Izuku grieve as Sir Night Eye is satisfied with his changed views of the future never being certain. In his last moments, Sir Night Eye says goodbye to everyone, tells All Might and Deku that he's thankful for having met them, and uses his quirk foresight one last time to look into Mirio's future assuring him that he will become an outstanding hero. Sir Night Eye passes away peacefully after telling everyone to keep smiling, as society needs smiles and laughs to bring about a brighter future. With the last words spoken, Izuku, Mirio, and All Might are left crying at the loss of their beloved Sir Night Eye. Remedial Course Arc Because Shota must take care of Eri, Toshinori becomes the substitute for Eraserhead for Katsuki and Shoto's provisional hero license training course, with Present Mike as his bodyguard. Before the exam starts, Endeavor enters, thanking All Might for looking after his son Shoto, and then demands to have a proper chat with All Might. All Might, alongside Endeavor and Present Mike, enter the room where the training was being held, and Endeavor shouts Shoto's name to encourage him, and gains the attention of everyone there. Everyone in the room were merely curious as to why he was there, but they grew ecstatic upon noticing All Might with him. While the students have the trial to take care of a group of unruly children from Masagaki, the former and the new number one heroes have a conversation. Endeavor asks the former number one hero what the symbol of peace is, telling him about how he became the number two hero at the young age of 20, but immediately knew he would never beat All Might, which is why he entrusted everything with Shoto. In response, All Might states that he always believed that the country needed a symbol to be their beacon of light, and in doing so, he ignored the people around him, such as his former sidekick. All Might tells Endeavor that he knows his struggle of filling in his spot as the number one hero, and tells him he doesn't need to follow in his footsteps to become the same symbol, but find his own way of doing things instead. Both heroes witness the success that the students have with the children, and All Might tells Endeavor that the reason to be strong is very simple, and believes Endeavor knows the answer to that simple question. After the trial ends, he talks with the Shiketsu High School teacher about the UA High School, and that both UA and Shiketsu should start working together in order to stop the League of Villains. At the beginning of October, All Might accompanies the work studies group to attend the funeral of Mirai Sakaki. Toshinori pays his respects to his former sidekick and friend, saying goodbye definitively to him before returning to his obligations. UA School Festival Arc Per Izuku's request, Toshinori meets with him at the school's break room. After discussing the preparations for UA's school festival, Toshinori asks Izuku why he wanted to meet at such a busy time, to which the latter expresses his desire to learn long-range attacks. Izuku frustratingly tells Toshinori that even with his power at 20%, he couldn't hold his own against Overhaul, and had it not been for Eri, he wouldn't have been able to win. Understanding his problem, Toshinori tells Izuku that he should use ranged combat as well, and both go to the UA's school ground forest sector. Toshinori asks Izuku to use One For All at 20%. Izuku activates One For All 20%, and even though it starts hurting him, Toshinori tells Izuku to remain in position and unleash his attack. Izuku jumps up and kicks, which releases a monstrous burst of wind. Toshinori congratulates him and tells him that he was going to teach Izuku to properly unleash wind pressure after his overall power limit passed 15%. 
Toshinori affirms that Izuku can unleash wind pressure without his body breaking, and tells him that he must take a moment to rethink through his journey. Izuku does so, and All Might states that once Izuku's maximum limit had passed 15%, he had wanted to tell him that he was not always bringing out 100%. Izuku is struck with realization that if All Might had continuously moved at 100%, he would have caused a devastating windstorm in the surrounding area. Izuku realizes that he can't move long at 20% and surmises that he must use one for all 20% in one area, which not only releases a decent amount of power, but prevents his body from becoming completely immobilized. Toshinori advises that Izuku needs much subtler control than he has exercised now. The days of the week go by and while Deku practices with his classmates for the school festival dance show, he also trains to be able to perform long range attacks with Toshinori Yagi. As Tochinori advises Izuku to avoid internal bleeding, Izuku has trouble keeping control of the wind pressure at critical moments and asks Toshinori for his advice, but he doesn't have any helpful suggestions since he was able to use one for all freely from the very beginning. Then Toshinori hears a noise behind him and catches a flying ball that was flying at him and Deku from behind without turning around. Mei Hatsume appears and reveals that she's there testing her inventions. Mei notices and informs Izuku that he will soon have the support item he requested. As Mei leaves, Izuku tells Toshinori that the item he requested has to do with a new technique he's developed. Toshinori shocks Izuku with the revelation that he once used support items as well, but the equipment was too bulky for him and wasn't effective in close range combat. While he finds reinforcing oneself with items to be a good strategy, Toshinori reminds Izuku not to rely solely on support items too much. The day of the festival has arrived. At 6.30pm, Izuku is training with Toshinori when Mei shows up and gives him the support equipment he requested a pair of gloves. Toshinori notes that back in his day, his support equipment was quite bulky and is surprised that support equipment nowadays are quite compact. Mei gives Izuku the manual for the gloves and runs off. Toshinori decides that Izuku should try out the gloves, with which Izuku agrees. After finishing the show, Toshinori scolds Izuku for worrying everyone with his delay, for which Izuku apologizes as well as for the scuffle between him and Gentle Criminal. Toshinori is well aware of the situation because he was told by Ryo Inui and Ectoplasm. Although Ryo praises Izuku for not getting injured and for preventing the festival from being cancelled, he scolds Izuku for not contacting the hero to take charge of the situation. Toshinori thanks Ryo, who gets overly excited and starts playfully attacking Toshinori. Pro Hero Arc At UA, All Might watches a report of a Nomu attack in the teacher's lounge along other members of the UA staff. He is horrified as it shows Endeavor being injured and overwhelmed by the Nomu's attack. All Might grabs his chest as he watches this scene, worried for his colleague. Toshinori then watches as Endeavor regains his strength and defeats the Nomu by incinerating it with Prominence Burn. He then witnesses Endeavor using a pose similar to the one he made to symbolize his victory against All For One and is shocked by this feat. Joint Training Arc One night, Izuku experiences a dream where the first user interacts with him and shared his memories. This dream ends when the One For All manages to activate on its own, causing a great mess in Izuku's room. The next morning, Izuku tells All Might everything that's happened about his dream, which leaves him surprised. All Might tells Izuku that he also experienced similar visions. His master told him that they're vestigial remnants of the prior generations of One For All rather than the usual simple dreams. However, he tells Izuku that he's the first user of One For All being able to interact with the vestiges. All Might tells Izuku that he truly doesn't understand what happened that well, and they should search for answers together. Izuku goes to the industrial training area where Class 1A and Class 1B are about to compete against each other in a joint training battle. Joining them is Hitoshi Shinso, who's eager to enter the hero course. The teams and the order of participation are organized by lots. All Might and Midnight come to spectate the battles. After round one in which Hitoshi participates, Shota asks All Might what he thinks about Hitoshi since this exercise is his test to get into the hero course. All Might claims that Hitoshi showed great potential and expects the next set to be even more passionate. After round two, All Might asks Izuku if he's felt anything weird since his dream about the previous users of One For All. Izuku replies that he hasn't and All Might tells him that he'll ask Gran Torino if Nana's ever mentioned anything to him about similar visions. All Might tells Izuku to be careful in his match against Hitoshi, as Hitoshi seems to be a piece of the puzzle as far as the visions are concerned. Suddenly, Katsuki appears and asks them what they were just talking about, reminding the two that he's also in on their secret. They tell Katsuki that One For All managed to activate on its own when Izuku had his dream, which surprises him. Katsuki proceeds to berate Izuku asking him when he'll make one for all his own. All Might wonders if this is Katsuki simply showing his own type of regard for Izuku. 
When Class 1A, under Kotsky's command, achieves victory in Round 4, All Might confronts Kotsky and commends him on a great job well done. Kotsky simply brushes him off and Izuku congratulates him next. Kotsky yells at Izuku out of reflex and then reminds Izuku that he's getting stronger. Izuku claims he'll still surpass Kotsky, annoying him, and continues the sibling rivalry between these two to get Daddy All Might's attention. All Might claims that Izuku has a good friend in Kotsky outside of his vulgar language. The fifth and final match starts, where Izuku along with Ochako, Mina, and Mineta faces the Class 1B team, in which Hitoshi is one of the teammates. All Might receives a call and walks over to a private area to speak to Gran Torino. Gran Torino tells him about Nana's dream about One For All, and the old hero mentions that around the time when Nana inherited One For All, she had a dream about a strange figure shrouded in dark fog, telling her it's not time yet. While the conversation goes on, something goes off with Izuku's quirk. As dark energy begins to emanate from his body and strength, destroying his equipment in the process, and goes on a rampage. A horrified All Might tells Shota and Vlad King to cancel the match before anyone becomes gravely injured in the process. However, before they could intervene, thanks to the intervention of Ochako and the power of Hitoshi, they manage to get Deku to regain control. The fifth round continues under the watch of Eraserhead, Vlad King, and All Might. Vlad expresses shock as Shota decides to let the match go on, despite both teachers witnessing Izuku's quirk going berserk. But Shota explains that he'll keep a close eye on Izuku, just in case he loses control of his power once again. He also notes that Hitoshi's brainwashing ability has managed to prevent it from injuring the participants. All Might questions Shota's decision, only for the latter to respond that he feels that all combatants still feel determined to fight out till their very last breath. After the joint exercise, Izuku, All Might, and Katsuki have a conversation about the latest events and revelations related to One For All. It turns out that the black tendrils that Deku manifested are actually the quirk of one of the predecessors known as Black Whip, and that Deku will manifest the quirks of the previous One For All users. When Katsuki asks All Might about what he knows about the interactions of the predecessors and Deku having a new quirk, he admits that everything is new to him and that he has no idea about the whole thing. The conversation ends when Kotsky asks if this turn of events has anything to do with All For One, explaining that it would make sense as he was the person who created One For All in the first place and that he can also possess multiple quirks. When All Might doesn't disregard the theory, he also states that it was the last thing he wanted to think of. Around 7 in the evening, Izuku and Kotsky engage in a sparring match at Jim Gamma. Kotsky tries to activate the Black Whip by putting Izuku in a dangerous situation, believing that would activate it. But Deku reveals that it apparently can't be unlocked as of now. All Might immediately tells the two to halt the match, seeing that it doesn't work. Without knowing what to do, they decide to return to their rooms. Meta Liberation Army Arc In early December, All Might accompanies Shoto and Katsuki for the final test to obtain their provisional hero license. They eventually succeeded, and on their return to UA, they witness a villain attack. All Might chases after Shoto and Katsuki as they confront a group of villains going after a theft spree. While Shoto and Katsuki battle the villains, All Might assists in evacuating the bystanders. One of the bystanders stops to film the fight, while unaware that a light post is about to fall on her. All Might notices and is able to push her out of the way at the last moment, thanks to one of Katsuki's explosions. He then gets berated by Katsuki for being careless. After the villains are defeated, All Might is accompanied by the pro hero Slide and Go, who praises the duo for a job well done. All Might also congratulates the duo for a great job. My Hero Academia Heroes Rising During fall, Toshinori and Principal Nezu met with Yokumi Romera at UA High School, who explained to them that the Hero Public Safety Commission's new program, the Hero Work Recommendation Project, to help to train the new generation of heroes due to All Might's retirement. Weeks go by and shortly after winter begins, Class 1A is sent to Nabu Island, a remote place in southern Japan. As the Class 1A members are helping around the island, at UA High School, All Might worries about whether they'll be okay. Shota assures Toshinori that he shouldn't be concerned, as Nabu Island is a quiet place where there haven't been any known incidents involving villains in the past 30 years, and the students should be relatively safe from any significant threats. Unfortunately, the island is attacked by the villain Nine and his gang, although the students manage to defeat them and send an SOS. Shortly after, Class 1A emerges victorious over the threat, a field force of professional heroes and the military arrive on Nabu Island. Toshinori helps the wounded Izuku and Katsuki, who had barely managed to defeat Nine. A barely conscious Izuku tearfully apologizes to Toshinori for giving one for all to Katsuki because he had no other choice if he wants to protect the people on the island before losing consciousness. 
Toshinori forgives Izuku, but is left surprised when he sees One for All still retained inside of Izuku. At first, he theorized that Katsuki must have lost consciousness before the transfer could be completed, but on second thought, theorized that One for All must have kept itself inside of Izuku for his willingness to risk himself to protect the innocent, even if it means losing One for All. Tearfully, Toshinori thanks the previous users of One for All and his master, Nanashimura. After several weeks of helping with the repairs, everyone returns to UA. Endeavor Agency Arc At the end of December, Toshinori appears more skeletal than usual because he hasn't slept in a few days, collecting all the information he could find about the previous One for All inheritors and their quirks to help Izuku. Nezu visits him to inform him that the next round of work studies will begin soon. A few days later, Nezu talks to All Might and Detective Naomasa through a video call. They talk about the fact that since all the students moved into Heights Alliance four months ago, they've been watched to see if there was a spy within the ranks. But in that time, no one's shown signs of being the spy, so it seems that the traitor isn't one of them. All Might tells Nezu that all students of the Hero Course are true heroes, and none of them is the traitor, to which Nezu replies he knows that. Then Nezu asks All Might if he'll return to UA that day. All Might tells him that it's unlikely since he's very busy, unless something happens to Izuku. Nezu reassures him by telling him that he apparently has forgotten that it's Christmas. Subsequently, Izuku and Katsuki talk with Toshinori that they've accepted a proposal from Shoto to do their hero work studies with Endeavor. Toshinori thinks it's an excellent idea. When Izuku asks him about training with One for All, he replies that there shouldn't be any problems because as long as he's mastered the image of locking and unlocking, All Might doesn't expect that he'll experience more outbursts. As for Katsuki, all Might tells him that it'll benefit him to work with Endeavor since both are very similar. Paranormal Liberation War Arc Winter break ends and students return to the UA High School. Class A heads to Ground Alpha to show how much they've improved with their skills and quirks during the hero work studies. Because Shota Aizawa has to attend an emergency, Toshinori replaces him. He welcomes Class 1A students at Ground Alpha, making cotton candy to make a joke on his catchphrase, which doesn't win over the students. Class 1A begins their training, battling villain bots to showcase their newfound abilities. Finally, it's Katsuki's and Izuku's turn to show off what they learned working for Endeavor at his agency. Toshinori is especially glad about Izuku showing his improved control over Black Whip. All Might recalls some of his interactions with him, holding back tears but proudly looking on as he realizes that Izuku no longer needs his approval, as he's outgrown the need for it. All Might concludes the class, revealing that everything was recorded for Shota Aizawa to watch later, and encourages the students to keep working hard at their work studies. Later in the teacher's lounge, All Might meets with Izuku and Katsuki, congratulating the two on their improvements, much to Izuku's delight and Katsuki's annoyance. All Might then places a notebook on the table that contains his research into the quirks of past successors of One for All. He reveals he couldn't find anything on the second and third users due to the error they existed in and the multifaceted nature of the quirk. All Might asks Izuku if he made contact with the other users, to which he says no. During the conversation about the previous heirs, Toshinori reveals that they were heroes who didn't have particularly powerful quirks, as All for One hunted down the strongest. Also, the concept of a One for All successor wasn't implemented until Nanashimura chose him. Until then, the heirs fought All for One and got themselves killed for it at a relatively young age, and simply entrusted One for All to their closest ally to keep fighting until one day the quirk grows powerful enough to defeat All for One. Katsuki then asks what the next quirk Izuku will get, to which Toshinori says it'll be Nana's quirk, which is called Float. At night, he's sitting outside Heights Alliance when Shota approaches him and asks him what he's doing, to which All Might says that he isn't doing much. He asks about Eri, to which Shota tells him she's asleep and he'll start training her this week. All Might offers his help, to which Shota appreciates. He then asks what's bothering All Might, to which he says that while he's decided to live, he can't help but feel powerless when he sees how much they've developed. Shota tells him that because he bore the title of Symbol of Peace for so long, it's hard for him to accept that there are so many other things he can do for the students, such as being there for them and to keep being the person he knows he is. All Might accepts the advice while asking what Shota wanted, to which he tells him that Naomasa sent a message to him, asking for him to delay his meeting with Stain. All Might is later seen watching the news about the destruction of Jakku City with Eri. After the Paranormal Liberation War, All Might is seen in the hospital, holding the hand of an unconscious Izuku, who has remained in a coma for two days due to the extent of his injuries. Toshinori continues to take care of Deku until Hawks and Best Genus arrive and asks to speak to him. 
Hawks explains that they want to know what the connection is between Izuku and All for One because the media heard that the villain was after something known as One for All, and Endeavor informed them that during the war, Tomura Shigaraki was targeting Izuku. With the current crisis, they need to know the truth. Recognizing that there's no point in continuing to hide the secret of One for All, Toshinori takes them somewhere to tell them everything. Days later, Izuku regains consciousness and is visited by his mother. A medic informs them that since Izuku's body has largely been able to adapt to his quirk, his injuries weren't that serious. Despite that, he warns that his limbs may still be immobilized, so he advises her to be careful. After the doctor leaves, Inko demands an explanation, and Toshinori and Izuku decide to tell her the whole truth about One for All. This leaves Inko dumbfounded, wondering what will become of his son knowing that the villains will go after him. Toshinori tells her that they're making arrangements to protect him at UA, but Izuku announces he won't be returning, since he doesn't want to put people he cares in danger. He hugs his mother and tries to reassure her as Ingo breaks down in tears, promising to return home to her. Barely able to contain her tears, Toshinori remembers when he bowed to her at their home and declares that he knows he can't stop Izuku from going, so he offers to join him. He contacts Best Genus, informing him of this turn of events, who accepts it, saying that he may be the only one who can determine Tomura's location after thinking of using him as the focal point of their efforts, so they'll follow in his wake while maintaining a safe distance. Tartarus Escape Ezark by the start of what would be Izuku's second year in April, they leave UA accompanied by Endeavor, Hawks, and Best Genist. The plan of the five is to use Izuku as bait to lure out the League of Villains and determine Tomura's location, while they follow suit maintaining a safe distance. This plan leads them to face a multitude of villains in order to find any clue about All for One and Tomura. A newly modified Izuku and All Might head off for their team up with the top three heroes. To help his protege and prevent further arm damage when fighting, Toshinori ordered a new support item for Izuku called Mid Gauntlets from America before the borders closed. After defeating and sending Muscular to prison, Izuku meets Toshinori in an alleyway, who is waiting for him by his car, Hercules. Toshinori asks him if he's hurt, and Izuku reassures him saying that he's fine and that the Mid Gauntlets were very useful. Toshinori reminds him that the item is still a prototype and they were made for endurance. They'll reinforce his body, but they can't handle 100% output. Therefore, he can't go overboard until his rematch. All Might's phone rings, picking it up to hear Hawks speaking to him while he, Endeavor, and Best Genus contain a villain. Hawks asks how Izuku's doing, and All Might reports he's fine, but he immediately departs, having received another warning from Danger Sense. Hawks surmises he's worried about putting anyone's lives in danger, adding that while they could potentially keep him completely isolated to prepare for what is to come, knowing the capacity of power the ones who attack Tartarus possess, it will be all over if they come well prepared. Because of this, following Izuku's idea, actively seeking out their enemy will raise the odds of their victory. Hawks knows how tough a position this is for Toshinori, and that even though he's worried, the best they can do right now is support him. During a stormy night, after Izuku saved the life of a woman who was being attacked by mistaking her for a villain, Toshinori arrives on the scene to help. Izuku asks him to take her to the shelter, but not before he hands him a lunchbox to eat, which he thanks him for. Later, while following Izuku from a safe distance, Toshinori thinks that Izuku is trying too hard at his task without hardly resting, and this reminds him of a conversation he had with his sidekick, Sir Night Eye, when he was convalescing from his injuries from his combat against All for One, when he wanted him to retire from hero work and take a break now and then. This memory is interrupted when he realizes Deku's GPS signal has disappeared. Then, a grenade is thrown at his car and explodes. Fortunately, the Hercules manages to withstand the explosion and Toshinori is unscathed. Two villains appear ready to throw flaming spears at him, and Toshinori instantly realizes that this isn't an ordinary attack, but with clear intentions to kill him. All Might grabs a spare phone and alerts the rest of his team that the villains are trying to separate them from Deku, who must be facing off against the villain. Toshinori manages to get out of the car with a suitcase before the villains destroy it with their weapons. The villains are surprised to see All Might, but don't stand down since he isn't the same as he was before, saying the real All Might died a long time ago. However, when he demands they stand aside, the villains start shivering in fear when they feel his aura of intimidation. Toshinori remembers the promise he made to Inko as he tells the villains that Deku is bearing more of a burden than he himself ever did, yet he still idolizes him, and he yells that the day anything happens to him is the day he dies. While he's busy dealing with these two villains, Deku confronts Lady Nagant, a villain sent specifically by All for One to capture him, but manages to defeat her and as a preventative measure, All for One implants her with a quirk of immolation that made her explode. God, <laughs> that's so violent. Thanks to the previous call from All Might, Endeavor and Hawks managed to reach Deku and take care of the charred Lady Nagant, who's still alive. Minutes later, All Might finally arrives asking Deku if he's okay and Endeavor assures him that everything is under control. Deku defeats an assassin sent by All for One and 
and immediately tells All Might that he knew nothing and to be careful in case he's rigged to explode. All Might yells to Deku to stop so he can give him some more food, but Deku tells All Might that he doesn't need to follow him anymore, saying that he's fine on his own now. All Might tries to speak to Deku but claims that he can practically move at 100% without injury just like he could, so he shouldn't worry about him. He wants to tell him to rest, but he can't as Deku leaves, and All Might trips as he tries to reach out to him. Unbeknownst to him, Stain overhears their conversation from the shadows. Depressed of Izuku leaving him behind, All Might returns to the site of Kamino Yokohama in the aftermath of Izuku's battle with Class 1A, intending to check in on the anti-hero supporters who refuse to evacuate. While still thinking about being unable to help Izuku, looking at a statue of his former self, he berates himself for doing nothing and just dragging everyone down. Stain suddenly appears above him, holding his sword near his neck and demanding to take back his slam against All Might. All Might realizes it's the hero killer and notes how Stain never went after him when he was active and they didn't get to have their meeting till now. But the hero killer becomes confused, leading All Might to clarify who he is by quickly transforming into his muscle form to prove it. But Stain reacts in disgust, refusing to believe that was him just now, calling him a sham and why he presumes to call himself a hero. All Might responds back to Stain's claims in agreement, explaining how he couldn't handle the uneasiness of the world, and despite being powerless, he wanted to make the world a better place. But now he's reached his endpoint. With so much chaos in the world and unable to protect the student he promised he would, he feels like he's gotten further away from heroism than anyone. Stain leaps forward and pulls All Might back behind an ice block before pointing him towards the statue. The two see a girl pulling down the I am not here sign off of it, which Stain says she's been coming by to clean the statue from the vandalism every day. All Might is confused why she would put herself in danger just for that until Stain reveals she's the last person All Might saved, the girl from the Kamino incident. Stain exclaims that what All Might did as a hero had nothing to do with his quirk, but that he always kept a smile on his face and did everything he could to help people. That the embers of inspiration he left behind continue to burn within those who followed him and have now started to form a great fire. So they all must continue to stoke the flame so that it won't die. After Stain reveals he knew about what happened regarding his true state, he tells him that if he's a true hero, to make use of his information from Tartarus, throwing him a knife and several pieces of paper, as well as telling him to end the man who murdered 40 heroes to fix the society before walking away. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi. And make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Uh, I'm Adrian. Thanks for watching. It's been a while since I've done another of these videos. But I uh, hope you enjoy. Peace.